welcome to Big Friendly Grub and welcome to the very first Big Friendly Grub recipe video. Yep, it's my very first video and for this one I thought I'd show you something that's super simple but something that I think that everyone should know how to make and that's a loaf of bread. I know it doesn't sound very exciting and there's more exciting recipe videos out there but I thought this was the best one to get started with because there's fewer things better than a freshly baked loaf of bread and you know I've had so many people say to me oh I can't bake bread I can't bake at all you know it's too hard it takes too much time and it's really not hard it's really not hard at all all you need is a bit of patience that's all the best thing about a loaf of bread is you can do it in stages go off and do something else and then come back uh, so it's super simple and you only need a handful of ingredients as well so I think this is one of the best things that anyone who wants to get into baking or is intimidated by baking can like start off with so I'm hoping to you know show you how simple it is and let's see how it goes we will need 500 grams of strong white bread flour you can use other kinds of flour in terms of that you can use wholemeal flour or you could try and use light rye flour but we're keeping it simple this time around because white flour strong white bread flour is the easiest one to work with because it's got the most gluten in it and it gives you that strength and that structure you want from your loaf of bread if you try and use plain flour that's the kind that you'll end up putting in cakes and things like that it just won't have enough strength and you just won't get a very good loaf of bread I'm sure it would taste fine but you just wouldn't have that great structure that you want from a really good loaf of bread then you want to use 10 grams of yeast you can get the fast action easy bake yeast like this kind you can use fresh yeast you can get fresh yeast I tend not to use it because it's a little bit trickier and it just you can only keep it for a couple of weeks in the fridge before you have to get rid of it so yeah stick with this kind and you can't go wrong really then you'll need um, about seven grams of salt got the sea salt crystals here but you could all easily use the finer kind um, as long as it's a fairly decent salt try not to use too rubbishy table salt or anything like that and then you will want about 350 milliliters of lukewarm water I might have a little bit more there doesn't matter too much because I'll explain as we go along but sometimes you need varying amount of water depending on the type of flour it is and depending on the conditions it is as well in the weather because if there's more humidity in the air a bit more moisture in the air then you won't need as much water science and then lastly I like to add a little bit of olive oil into my bread not too much probably about 30 milliliters or so just to add a little bit of flavor add a, and a, I think it adds a little something to the texture but to be honest you can just still make it with these four ingredients so it really is one of the most simple things you can make then in terms of equipment we will need a nice size bowl here and then I really think it's a good idea to invest in a dough scraper they cost nothing at all um, well they do cost something but they're, they're really really cheap you can probably get one for a quid or even less but yeah they're, they're super cheap and they are so so handy for clearing up any mess and helping you mix together the dough then you'll need a decent set of scales and a loaf tin um, the size doesn't matter too much because um, you can get different shapes and sizes this one's probably about, about eight by five but you can experiment with the loaf tins get the shape that suits you also I'm going to be showing you today how to make this all by hand from scratch in a bowl um, you can use one of these stand mixers um, it'll cut out loads of time loads of the effort but I thought yeah this is the very first time I'm showing you how to make bread and it might be the first time you're making bread so I really want to show you how to do it by hand because if you can do it by hand then you'll be able to do it in one of those machines no problem and not everyone is lucky enough to have one of these things so we're going to do it the old-fashioned way by hand a bit of elbow grease so let's start off by measuring out all of our dry ingredients so we will be starting off by needing about 500 grams of our strong white bread flour Oh, I'm just over if you're over by a gram doesn't matter too much baking is a science but a gram isn't going to kill anyone so 
But like I said in my very first introductory video, I'm not perfect. I just want to show you guys that anyone can do this. So if you're a gram over, I wouldn't worry too much. And let's reset the scale. Even out our flour. Then usually you can get sachets of this yeast. Um, they usually come in about in seven gram sachets, which is absolutely fine. I like to use a little bit more, about 10 grams. Um, you'll notice I also haven't sifted the flour because it all come together when we start to knead it anyway. It, we're not baking a cake, it doesn't need to be super fine. So, about 10 grams of this. Boom, there we go. Then we want about seven grams of salt. When you're putting in your salt, be sure to keep it on the opposite side of the bowl to the yeast, because if you put direct contact of the salt onto the yeast, it will um, kill the yeast and you won't get a rise. When you mix it all together, it's absolutely fine. But yeah, direct contact of the salt onto the yeast is no. Sorry, I just had to go and shoot a huge wasp out of the kitchen. I hate wasps. They're like one of the worst things. Terrified of them. So yeah, had to go. So up next is our olive oil. Like I said, this is optional, but I like to add it because I think it adds to the bread. And we want about 30 milliliters. I've got it on grams here, but to be honest, grams and milliliters, they come out at pretty much the same thing. So you don't need to shift around with changing around your settings on your on your scale. I'll probably have someone say, oh, that's not true, but it's always worked out for me, so I wouldn't worry too much. So about 30 mils on this. Ooh. A little bit over. Again, if you're over by a gram or a milliliter or two, it's not the end of the world. So next we're gonna be doing our water. Um, I've moved the scales away because I've already kind of pre-measured out the amount of water that I want. And here's where you kind of start learning by eye how your dough should be looking when you add the water. Because um, as I mentioned earlier, it can vary the amount of water that you need on the day, depending on the conditions and depending on the, the type of flour you've got. So I'm just gonna start adding in bit by bit. I'm gonna use my dough scraper to help bring things together. So I'm going to probably put about half of this in and start to bring this all in, mix all the yeast in, make sure you get all the yeast through the flour here and um, make sure it's all distributed well so you get a nice even rise. We start to see it starts to come together into clumps. So yeah, I'm going to add even more of this in. It's going to be messy work, but to be honest, that's half the fun. You know, you get your parents in the when you were a kid saying, oh, don't make a mess in the kitchen. To be honest, if you're doing a good job, you're going to be making a mess. Yeah, you know, you'll get into it. So you see it's starting to come together a bit more. I'm going to need a bit more of this, but I'm going to try and work it in quite well before I start adding more of my water. A little bit more. And to be honest, if you do go over or under the amount of water that you need, you can just add more flour if you make it too wet. If it's too dry, then you keep adding more water. You can see it's all starting to come together. The bowl, you can scrape down the sides of the bowl with your dough scraper. Keep working at it. It's coming together, probably needs a bit more water. Definitely needs more water actually, so add a little bit more. And to be honest, I'm probably gonna put my dough scraper to one side and start getting in there with my hands because I'm now at that point where I just really, really wanna be able to work all of this water in. There we go. You can see it's starting to really come together now. Bring your dough around your side to pick up all of that flour come together quite nicely here and um, it's a little bit a little bit tacky but that's okay try and pick up as much of that dough from the sides to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna want any more water than that that looks about right to me just scrape as much of this 
off around the sides as you possibly can. So you can see the bowl's fairly clean. Now, right, so that's probably about right. It's a little bit tacky, but other than that, you, you can pick it up fairly well and it's not gonna stick to your hands too much. So I'm gonna move this out of the way now, put this down on here. And I'm just gonna put down a very, very light dusting of flour because it will help you with kneading. And I think this is where people tend to get a bit nervous about um, kneading because you know, they've never done, done it before, not gonna be worrying, they don't have the right technique. To be honest, there's several kneading techniques out there. I'm no expert by any means, but I'm gonna show you one that I really like. Um, and that's the stretch, turn, stretch, turn 90 degrees, turn it again. And you can see it's just a nice even movement. <laughs> now, depending on how long you know, you've been doing this, if this is your first time, you're probably gonna to wanna to do this for a good 10 minutes. If you've got a really good kneading technique, then you probably only have to do this for about five minutes or so. But somewhere between five and 10 minutes is how long you're gonna need it for. So I'll do this a little bit more. So stretch, turn, stretch, turn. And it just this action is gonna strengthen the gluten in the bread. And it's what's gonna get you your really, really nice um, structure in your bread. So I'm not gonna keep on talking while I do this because I'm probably gonna make all sorts of horrible noises while I do this. So I've just finished kneading my dough. You can see that it's like, all come together, it's nice, it's smooth, it's beautifully shaped into a beautifully round shape. Um, you know, springs back when you press into it, you know, it's, it's pretty much there. You know, it stretches out a really, really nice amount. So this is pretty much how you want it. It will take you a good few goes to probably get it right the first time, but you'll get there, you really will. It's just a practice makes perfect sort of time. Don't get frustrated if you don't do it the first time. It just takes a bit of patience. If it doesn't feel quite right, doesn't look quite right, try and use your instincts. If it looks a bit too dry, if add a little bit more water. If it's too wet, add a bit more flour. Don't go overboard on the flour when you're trying to knead it out because you'll mess up your ratios a little bit. But this is probably good. Lovely, lovely and smooth. I'm really happy with that. So. What we need to do now is we need to grab our bowl, pop it in the bowl. I'm not going to bother cleaning it because I'll do it later. Then what we need to do, I need to run over to my cupboard. Well, not run because I'm not built for running. And the neighbours below will probably get a bit angry if I start stumping across the ground. But you're going to want to cover it with something like cling film. I try not to use cling film because it's not the best thing in the environment, but I've got this huge roll here. So I should probably use this up before I try and find alternative methods. Try and not cut myself on the uh, very sharp edge. Pop this over the top. Try and make it as airtight as possible. Now that's ready to prove probably for about an hour. I'll check it after an hour. It's not the warmest of days, so it might need a little bit longer. So what you wanna do is put it away somewhere relatively warm, not too hot, but warm so it'll give the chance for the yeast to do its thing. I like to chuck mine in my cupboard um, where it's got no sunlight on it and it can do its thing. So I'm gonna pop this away right now. Now that that's done and is in the cupboard proving for an hour or so, I can now try and use my time wisely. I'm going to clean up a little bit and probably make myself some lunch and then we'll come back in an hour or so, see how the dough has risen and go on to our next step. 
See you in a bit. Hello, we're back. It's been about an hour and um, the, the dough has had that time to prove. Um, I've used my time wisely. I've had something to eat. I've cleaned up. I've cleaned my work services. A uh, quick tip is if you find that you've got a lot of dough stuck to your work surfaces for some reason, if your dough was a little bit too sticky, then the best thing you can clean it with is some hot water, no soap or anything like that. Just give it a good wipe with that. Use your dough scraper that I showed you earlier and try and scrape off the dough. You'll find that will be the best thing to get it across. Then after you've got the worst of it off, then you can use some sort of like cleaner or something like that on your surfaces to make them nice and clean. Enough uh, household tips, um, we're here for the baking. So let's go take our dough out of the uh, cupboard and see how it's risen. So here we go. We can see that the dough has now like, doubled in size quite nicely. It's looking nice and smooth. Let's just take the um, cling film off. There we go, it looks lovely. It looks about the right sort of size. You don't wanna overprove it. Take this out, pop it into a baking tin and then leave it for its second proof. So let's get onto that now. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way and we've got the baking tin here. So what I like to do is, generally if you've got a decent non-stick baking tin, then you don't usually need to grease it too much, but I like to, I like to use some of this slow cow spray oil because a few squirts of that, then you can then use a little bit of uh, tea towel or kitchen towel, sorry, and just coat around your insides then we can just take our dough you want to knock all the air out like this it's really really satisfying to do just knock as much of the air out as you can then then scrape it out of the bowl you probably want to use your dough scraper here i've got thankfully i've got the majority of this out already and then what you want to do is you just want to try make it roughly into like the shape of your tin. So that's probably going to be about right. I wouldn't worry too much about being exact because once it rises up, it should form into the shape of the tin. So that's that's pretty much in there, actually. I'm going to Fold that round a bit more just because you want to try and if you have like a seam it's best to kind of keep it on the bottom so that's a bit better so now that our dough is in the tin we now want to take a clean tea towel i stress clean pop that over the top and then we can now put it back into wherever we're approving it in my case back into the cupboard and give it another probably about another 45 minutes to an hour Hopefully it will again double in size. It will come up to just over the top of the tin. You don't want it to come too far up over the tin because it will start spilling over and we won't get a good shape. So let's give it another 45 minutes to an hour and see where it is in that time. And we're back. So our dough has had probably about 50 minutes or so. Um, it's a bit warmer now, so it didn't need like an hour or anything like that. Um, I've used my time wisely and started uh, practicing my piano because by God, I need it. Um, and yeah, that's given us the time for the dough to rise and to prove and to, to do its thing. So enough talking, let's have the moment of truth. And there we go. So you can see it has risen nicely. It's doubled in size. It's got that lovely dome on the top that we would come to expect from a loaf of bread. And it looks pretty much good to go, apart from um, what I would recommend doing when you bake a loaf of bread is just to score the top. I like to use one of these. This is basically a baker's scalpel, which you can get hold on Amazon. But if you don't have one of these, um, a very sharp knife will do, obviously be careful. So I'm just gonna run, score this across the top down the middle. So we've got one there. I'm gonna do it one more time across the other way. So we've got a nice deep score. That will give it um, space to, to rise. Um, otherwise you might get like splits in your bread where you don't want them. So it will give us that nice traditional loaf shape. 
Um, if you really wanted to, you could dust it with flour before you did this, if that's what you want. Um, I'm going to opt to not do that this time, just because I don't want to clear up the flour afterwards. I'm being lazy, but feel free to do that if you want. So this is now ready to go into the oven. So I have set my oven to about 200 degrees C, that's fan assisted. If you don't have a fan assisted oven, you're probably looking at about 210, 220 degrees C. Um, depending where you are, that's probably about 375 degrees Fahrenheit or about guest mask six, depending on what your oven is. What I like to do, if you want a nice, really, really crusty loaf, then what I recommend is putting a tray down into the bottom of your oven. Uh, this is very, very hot, so I'm trying not to get too close. And then I would just say, just pour that into the bottom of the oven. Try not to break your jug. And then pop the bread in. And then you can leave that to bake for about 25 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes. I would probably check it after 20. Um, and what that steam will do, it will kind of replicate what you get in a professional baker's where they will spray, they've got ovens that will shoot steam into the oven. And it will get, give you a really, really nice crusty loaf. So we're gonna leave that to bake now for, yeah, about 25 minutes and we'll see you then. So I've just taken the bread out of the oven. Um, I didn't film myself doing that because if I tried to film and take bread out of the oven at the same time, I'd probably horribly burn myself because I'm quite good at that. Do be careful when you're trying to take the bread out, out of the oven. Use like oven gloves if you do, because if you're anything like me, you're bound to burn yourself. Um, if you don't have oven gloves, very, very carefully use a couple of tea towels. But the bread is out of the oven and it's just in its tin still, but there you go, look at that. So you can see it's got that traditional loaf shape. It's risen well, it's poking out of the tin. It's got that split down the top. It's looking really, really good. I'm gonna actually take it out of the tin now, um, leave it to cool. Um, I'm gonna very, very carefully tip it up and try not to burn myself. The tin has cooled down a little bit now. Don't try that at home, use gloves. This will firm up, now it's out of the tin, this will actually firm up. So I'm gonna leave it on a um, baking, not baking sheet, a cooling rack now for probably about 10, 15 minutes, and then we can have a proper look at it. So the bread has now had 10 to 15 minutes to cool down, um, so we can now have a little bit of a closer look at it. So you can see it's got that nice traditional loaf shape, it's got a good sound on it, it's got a bit of a crust on it, we could potentially make this crustier by changing the ingredients, but that's another recipe for another day. Um, I really love a good crusty roll and um, I've made those before, but never on video. So that could well be another video for another day. But it's looking really nice. It's got a really good shape on it. And you can also see over here, at the same time, I was making another loaf using the same method. And this one actually has half white, half rye flour in it. And it's not quite risen as much as the other one, and that's probably due to the fact that it's got the rye flour in it, but it still looks really, really good. Um, I'm sure it tastes great as well. Um, and it just goes to show that you can make like two really nice loaves of bread in a single afternoon. Um, you don't have to go down to the shop and buy something that's like pre-made. You know, you know exactly what goes into it. It looks really, really good. It's going to taste great. It'll be great just by itself with a bit of butter or you know, as a cheese sandwich or bacon sandwich, whatever you want, really. Um, but it's, it's so simple. It just requires a little bit of time and patience. So there we go. The very first uh, Big Friendly Grub video is done and dusted. And we've managed to make a really nice uh, traditional white loaf. In fact, we managed to make two uh, traditional white loaves. And it just goes to show that, you know, baking bread doesn't have to be this big scary thing and really anyone can do it. You know, we've managed to make these in an afternoon 
and it really doesn't take that much effort at all, you. Okay, so the kneading takes a little bit of time, but with practice, you, you have that down pat in no time. And this gives you the basis to make all kinds of other bread. Yeah, this is literally like the, the, the foundation for experimenting and putting whatever you like into your breads and trying new things. Um, you know, it's, it takes a relatively short amount of time for what you get out of it. Yeah, most of the time was just waiting around for the bread to actually prove more than anything else. So, you, you know, you don't have to take like a whole afternoon out. You, you go and make the bread, pop it away, do something else, take it out again, put it into a tin, go off again, do something else, come back, bake it, there you go, done. You know, it's really that simple. So, you know, I really urge you to just give it a go. If you never baked before, or even if you've baked before and it's not gone quite right, you know, give it another go. You really, really should. It's, it's one of the most rewarding things in the world. And, you know, you, you can do it with your kids, or you can you know, do it and surprise your loved ones and go, look, look what I made. And you know, it's just one of the best things in the world for me. So you know, give it a try. Let me know if you give it a try. And good luck. And I will see you on the next Big Friendly Grub video. Bye.